Welcome to Worship with Susanna Wesley United Methodist Church. My name is Andrew Conard. I'm the pastor, and I'm so glad to welcome you to this worship experience this morning. Today, we'll listen for God's word in song and we'll scripture and consider the ways that we might live it out in our faith every day. I'm so glad that you're here, and whether it's your first time here uh, experiencing worship with us or whether you've been connected for a long time, I hope that today you're encouraged and inspired to live as a follower of Jesus Christ and to be part of a diverse Christian community that's formed here at Susanna Wesley and shares God's love in our community and beyond. As we begin our worship service today, I invite you to join with me in our call to worship. Please join me in the call to worship. How long, O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Lest my foes rejoice because I am shaken. But I trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord. For the Lord has dealt bountifully with me. And now I invite you to listen to a word for our children at children's time. Good morning, boys and girls. It's Miss Jamie. Today, I want to talk with you about something that Jesus never said. So Jesus never said that you get what you deserve. So I want you to think about if you've ever said these words to someone before. That's not fair. Sometimes we say that. I'm going to share some situations with you, and I want you to think about whether or not you think these things are fair and tell your parents if you think they're fair or not. So your older sister gets to stay up later than you do. Do you think that's fair or not fair? What about your brother got money for his birthday and you didn't get any money for your birthday? Or you have a friend who has a new toy and they show it to you, but they won't let you play with it with them. Do you think that's fair or not fair? Or how about this one? You didn't get to have a birthday party this year because of COVID-19. Fair or unfair? Jesus never promised us that things would be fair in our life or that we would get what we deserved. In fact, when Jesus was on the earth, he was treated very unfairly. He even died on the cross and had done nothing wrong. When we feel like something's unfair, we can pray about it. And we can know that Jesus understands our hurt because he was treated unfairly too. But the really cool thing is one day we're gonna get something that we definitely don't deserve. One day we're going to get to have eternal life and live with Jesus. And we definitely don't deserve that, but we get to have it because of the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for loving us no matter what. Help us to love others no matter what. Amen. I'm so glad that you are present for this worship experience, and I invite you to take a moment, if you haven't already, to center yourself for worship. If you've got a candle, you might bring it and light it there in your home or wherever you are. You might uh, try to, to focus on the experience as we gather together, and you might take a moment to be in community. Maybe you're worshiping with others that are physically with you, but even if you're not, you are worshiping with others that are connected with Susanna Wesley across our county and in our city. So I invite you to welcome some of them. You might send a text message or an email, drop a note in the comments if you're on Facebook, and let us know that you're here so that we can recognize that it's not just you and your family or your household there, but it's all of us together, gathered to worship God in this way, in this time. Would you take a moment to welcome those that are worshiping with you today? We also invite you to register your attendance and let us know that you were here today. You can now do that on the Church Center app. So if you download the Church Center app for iOS or Android, and then go to uh, the check-ins at the bottom, you can let us know that you're here during worship. Now this only works on Sunday. If you're worshiping another day of the week, 
You can go to our website or find links near this video to register your attendance using a form. But I want to encourage you, if you haven't downloaded the Church Center app already, to do that. You can uh, register your attendance, you can check in for worship there, your whole family as well. You can give uh, with that tool, and if you have a prayer request, you can email me at andrew at swumc.org, or again, use one of the links close to this video to share a prayer request as we continue in our worship service together. As we continue, we come now to listen to the words and music of Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. We come now to our time of prayer, and I invite you to engage in a time where you are focused on what God might have to say for you and what you might have to say to God. As we begin our time of prayer, we will pause for a few moments of quiet to invite you to do just that. Offer to God your own prayers. I'll guide us together today in a time of prayer for our graduates. We are recognizing that this milestone, this transition in life is different this year. We're unable to gather in ways that we have in the past. And I wanna pray a prayer of blessing for all our graduates, both close by and far away. So I'll guide us in that prayer uh, today. And finally, we'll invite you to pray the Lord's Prayer, the prayer which Jesus teaches all of his disciples to pray as we conclude our time of prayer during this worship experience. Will you pray with me? God of truth and knowledge, by your wisdom, we are taught the way and the truth. Bless all our graduates as they now finish their course of study. We thank you for those who taught and worked beside them and all who supported them along the way. Walk with these graduates as they move forward in life. Take away any anxiety or confusion of purpose. Strengthen their many talents and skills. Instill in them a confidence in the future you plan. Help them use their energies for the good of all people. For the sake of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you now to listen to the words and music 
of amazing grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. Through many dangers, toils, and snares I have already come, tis grace hath brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but The first reading of scripture comes from the Gospel of Luke, 23rd chapter, verses 39 through 43. One of the criminals hanging next to Jesus insulted him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. Responding, the other criminal spoke harshly to him. Don't you fear God, seeing that you've also been sentenced to die? We are rightly condemned, for we are receiving this appropriate sentence for what we did. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, I assure you that today you will be with me in paradise. Here ends the first reading of the morning. You know, Jesus shared a lot of wisdom in the Bible. We look to the scriptures to guide our lives, to shape our practices, to share with others how we are living a a life of light and hope. And yet there are things that Jesus didn't say that sometimes we get confused or that we see others get confused about what his guidance might be for how we might live our lives. Today, we're concluding a series called The Things That Jesus Never Said as we take a look at what Jesus didn't say so that we can get a better idea about what Jesus did say and how we live our lives in response to these words. We started this series with a look at forgiveness, and we remember that it can be a challenge to forgive, especially those who may have hurt us physically, emotionally, or spiritually. We learned that the first step on the road to forgiveness is to pray for someone. And we'll see that again as Jesus' actions on the cross. We love because God first loved us, and we're able to offer forgiveness to others because God forgives us. Two weeks ago, we looked closer at the story of a woman who's caught in adultery, and Jesus' words to her about the future, he did not condemn or judge her. He said, go, and from now on, don't sin anymore. Likewise, Jesus' response to our own sin is full of possibility and love, and Jesus doesn't invite us to do anything that makes us happy. Instead, Jesus invites us to live a life filled with love and joy and peace, 
following after God's guidance and living in God's kingdom. Last week, we considered the reality of good and bad days. Everyone has bad days, and even in the midst of them, God is still present. God walks with you no matter what it is that you're going through, so keep going. Know that there is always hope, and when you have bad days, God walks with you. This week, we consider what Jesus didn't say about getting what you deserve. Now, sometimes when I think about getting what we deserve, I think of, well, I should, I should obviously get that, uh, that award or that recognition. And, and sometimes when I think about getting what I deserve, it's because uh, I'm getting what I deserve because of what I've done wrong or because I haven't met my own expectations in some way. And, and sometimes what that leads to for me is, is guilt. Do you ever struggle or experience guilt in your life? There are all kinds of guilt that you might feel. I've experienced all of these at some time myself. Maybe you have as well. Uh, maybe you feel guilty about what you eat. Maybe it's not what you eat. Maybe it's the volume that you eat. You eat something, it's delicious, and then I start to think about it and start to feel guilty because I actually ate all those calories. There is working parent guilt. Maybe even now, uh, especially so, that we're all working from home. I feel guilty when I'm with my family because I'm not taking care of things with church. I, I feel guilty when I'm working on stuff with church because I'm not spending time with my family. And when I do take time for myself in hobbies or things that I like to do for fun, sometimes I feel guilty because I'm not doing things for the church or for family. Do you ever feel like that? There's guilt from responsibilities. I can feel guilty when I say no to an opportunity or responsibility because it's just not going to work in my life at the time. And I can feel guilty when I say yes to an opportunity because it just really isn't going to work in my life at this time. Do you ever struggle with taking responsibilities or setting boundaries? And then there's spiritual guilt. Sometimes this comes really easily. I don't give or serve enough. I, I lost my streak in the Bible app. This happened to me a few weeks ago. It keeps track of how many days in a row you open the app and read the Bible. And I think, hey, I'm the pastor of the church. I'm going through these reading plans. I should be able to do that every single day. And then I wake up and I look, oh, look, there's my streak. It's, it's not whatever it was before. It's one. One. Are you kidding me? And then I start to feel guilty about that. How can the pastor of the church miss a day of opening the Bible app? One of the areas that I struggle most is meeting expectations. I hardly ever feel that I'm really meeting the hopes that I have for myself as a pastor. If I'm doing what I should be at church, I'm not being the dad or husband that I should be. And if I'm being the husband or dad that I should be, I, I'm not doing what I should do at church. I understand guilt in my life. And I'm guessing that you do too. What is it that you feel guilty about? Today, we're going to go back a few weeks to Jesus' final hours on the cross. We didn't pay much attention to the other two people uh, that were hanging on crosses that day as we were moving through the season of Lent, and we're going to give some attention to this scripture from Luke chapter 23. A few verses earlier from our passage today, we read these words. They also led two other criminals to be executed with Jesus. When they arrived at the place called the Skull, they crucified him along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Of course, as followers of Jesus, we most often focus on what it means for him to die on the cross, and rightfully so, forgiveness of our sins, uh, redemption for the world, all of those things. And, and yet we also have this brief interaction between Jesus and the criminals who were hanging on crosses that day. But before we get to that conversation, I want to remind you, give you some context about what it meant to be put to death by crucifixion. It was not good. You remember that crucifixion was capital punishment. It was one of the ways that the Romans carried out a death sentence at the time. It was terribly painful. 
The word excruciating, which we can use to describe pain, comes from the same root word crucifix or cross. Out of the cross, it means not only was it horrible physically, but it was also designed to be humiliating. You were hung in public, often naked, as a spectacle for the population to remember who was in charge here. It was the Romans, and you were part of that message. It was reserved for the worst of the worst criminals. It wasn't just petty criminals who were hanging next to Jesus that day, not just pickpockets. They'd done something horrible, deserving of this excruciating, very shameful way to die. And in the middle of this scene of those that have been put to death for terrible crimes, we hear Jesus say these words. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. They drew lots as a way of dividing up his clothing. Jesus is hanging on the cross, dying in this most terrible way. And in the midst of it all, Jesus prays for forgiveness for others. Can you imagine? Then we come to our passage for today. And this brief interaction between these three crucified humans. One of the criminals hanging next to Jesus insulted him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. Maybe he was taunting and insulting. Aren't you the Christ? Come on, Jesus, save us. This criminal has been sentenced to death and he spends some of his final efforts to hurl insults. And from the other side, we hear a different response, a rebuke of the first criminal. Responding, the other criminal spoke harshly to him. Don't you fear God, seeing that you've also been sentenced to die? We are rightly condemned, for we are receiving the appropriate sentence for what we did. But this man has done nothing wrong. This criminal recognizes two things. First, Jesus has done nothing wrong. Nothing, certainly, that deserves a death like this. And second, this criminal realizes that they have done something that deserves a death like this. They deserved it. Jesus did not. Part of what this criminal is naming is what is so often true for us today. You've heard these phrases before. What goes around comes around. Your past will come back to haunt you. When you make your bed, you've got to sleep in it. These are all ways of saying that you are going to get what you deserve. In our house, we call this natural consequences. It applies to children and adults at times. If I eat a bunch of ice cream and have a stomach ache not long after, it's natural consequences. If I decide that I'm not going to stretch after I go for a run and then feel tight and sore later, it's natural consequences. I get what I deserve in these situations. And you might think about times where there are natural consequences. We make choices and then we get what we deserve, a result of our choices. But this starts getting a little sketchier when we start applying it to every situation and especially when we start applying it to other people. Maybe you've had an experience like this. I'm driving down Wanamaker, headed to Home Depot to pick up some supplies for a home project. I'm a law-abiding citizen trying to follow the speed limit and then I see uh, some driver speed by in their sports car and I think, what in the world? Come on now. Give him a dirty look. And then I see the officer turn on their lights and pull them over and I think, yes, you got what you deserve. And I drive by feeling a little bit smug inside and, and that's how it should work, right? Except, of course, when the person who's breaking the speed limit is me. When I find myself driving fast, faster than the speed limit, I see a vehicle checking speed and quickly find myself putting on the brakes. I get a pit in my stomach and then I look around to see is there anyone else that's close by that's driving faster than I am? Maybe they'll pull over that person instead. I don't deserve to get a ticket. 
I'm driving safely, I'm paying attention, I, I'm, I'm just in a hurry. And I apply things differently to myself than I might apply them to others. Has that ever happened to you? Do you ever struggle with thinking that the rules should be different for you than for everybody else? I know I do. They deserve it, but I don't. Some of these things are at play in this conversation among these three crucified humans. The criminal continues. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He has just named that he recognizes that he is deserving of death. This criminal and the other one hanging there next to Jesus deserves to die. And yet he still asks Jesus in this moment, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And in response to this request, here's what Jesus did not say. Jesus didn't say, you know what? You had it coming to you. Sorry, friend, you should have made better choices. Jesus didn't say, didn't say, don't you remember the Sermon on the Mount? That's when you had your chance. I can forgive a lot of things, but not your sins. It's too late for you. Jesus didn't say any of these things. This is not the way the love of God works. This criminal couldn't go to church. He couldn't be baptized. He couldn't give an offering. He's guilty. And he turns away from his sin. He repents. And he says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And here is what Jesus did say. Jesus replied, I assure you that today you will be with me in paradise. Today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus offers grace and forgiveness to a criminal who deserved to die and is near death. And we might think, you know, that's just not fair. He didn't deserve to be with Jesus in paradise. And you're right. The good news is that God offers us forgiveness through Jesus Christ that we don't deserve. Jesus invites us to turn from our sins, to say that we're sorry, and to repent. You and I can receive forgiveness and begin again, not just once, not just a couple times in our life, but every day, over and over, God offers us forgiveness and mercy and love. God offers us the opportunity to start again, not that, so that we can go on sinning, but so that instead we can become a part of God's kingdom coming on earth and live a life of love and joy and peace and share that life with others. We don't deserve God's love and forgiveness, and yet that is exactly what God offers us. Our invitation is to say yes. It's an opportunity to say, I'm sorry for my sins, Thank you for your love and forgiveness. Please fill me with your spirit and help me to follow you. And this is the life that God offers us in Jesus Christ as one of his followers sharing this news with others. And we receive it and we share it and we can start today. Will you pray with me? And you can just repeat after me if you'd like, oh God, please forgive me for my sins. I'm sorry for my mistakes. Thank you that you died and rose for me. I trust you with my life. Please fill me with your spirit and help me to follow you. In your holy name, amen.
thank you for being a part of the community at Susanna Wesley United Methodist Church. One of the ways that we continue to put God's love in action is by opening our Early Learning Center again this week to provide needed care for families in our community. Our staff and directors have been uh, particularly careful to make sure that we're able to do this in a safe way and been glad to welcome children and families from our community that they might play again with their friends, continue to be part of this Christian environment where they're growing and developing and so that families can have needed care. Thank you for building diverse Christian communities where God's love is in action. You help make Susanna Wesley possible and help us tell stories just like these. Thank you for your financial support that makes ministry possible. In the last 30 days, we've had seven new donors and 41 online contributions. Thank you for your financial support. Giving online with your bank account is the very best way to give. It's cheaper than mailing a check. You can get started by texting any dollar amount to 84321. You can start by text or you can download the Church Center app. You can give on our website and no matter how you do it, we'll tie your payment method to a way that identifies you, your email address, your phone and the Church Center app, and you can contribute in those ways. I'm so proud to be the pastor of Susanna Wesley. Your generosity helps us continue to share God's love in our neighborhood now and in every day ahead. I invite you now to listen to the words and music of our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son. I'm so glad that you got connected for this worship experience today. And whether it's your first time here, whether you've been connected every week for a long time, I hope that you experience God's presence in a real and meaningful way. And that you had the chance to form a connection that might not otherwise be possible. Before you conclude our time together, I invite you to register your attendance and let us know that you were here. If you're worshiping on Sunday morning, you can do that in the Church Center app using the check-in at the bottom of the screen. If you're worshiping any other day or don't have the Church Center app, you can use the form that's with the link close to this video. You can share your prayer requests there and give online as well. I'm so glad that you were here and I hope that you take this message of God's love and mercy into every interaction that you have. We don't get what we deserve and we can share with others God's love and forgiveness and live a life of joy and peace. So go now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.